All right, let's take a look at a, a real uh, document database, and in this case, it's CouchDB. We are right now in a utility, which in keeping with the theme of couches is called Futon. And Futon lets you uh, manage your databases and actually do data entry and data maintenance, all inside of a nice browser-based application. Notice we have a link up here on the upper left to create a database. And if we click that and supply a name for the database, boom, it's done. That's all there is to it. Of course, we don't have any documents in it, so let's go ahead and take care of that. We'll click New Document. And notice automatically we get an ID field, and we get a unique uh, string that will become the ID for this document. We could overwrite that with our own value if we wanted to, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and leave it right there. And I'm going to add a new field. And this new field is going to be called title. Imagine we're going to make a, a little database to um, capture our media library. And imagine we have a copy of the book Catcher in the Rye. Now, because it's a book, we kind of want to record that. So we'll create a field called type of media and we'll put book. And because it's a book, we'll create one more field called number of pages. And I looked this up online, and the current edition of the book has 214 pages. Now I can save each of these edits. That doesn't actually save the document, though, so I'm going to go ahead and click Save Document. And we're all set. Now let's create another document. Let's go back in the breadcrumb trail to the databases page, and then let's add a new document. Let's add a new field. Now, notice that even if I want to stay 100% consistent in structure, I still have to do that manually. Every new document is a brand new clean slate. So uh, I'm going to use a structure that is similar but not identical to the last document. Uh, we're going to have title, and in this case, it's going to be Citizen Kane. And of course, that's a movie. So we'll have a type of media field again, and we'll put film as the type of media. We'll tab out of there, and we'll add one more field. And because this is a film, we're going to go ahead and put the uh, duration down, and that's 119 minutes. Now notice I put the unit in the value here, whereas before the unit was in effect in the name of the field. And that may strike you somewhat inconsistent, and I suppose it is. But because the database is going to be very geared to kind of serving up content, I'm okay with that. As long as I don't need to do any kind of analytics on this number, I'm all right with the fact that it ends up um, kind of being a, a real text value. Um, so let's go ahead and save this document. Let's go, um, let's go back to... Uh, the databases page and now you see we have both documents in there let's click on this guy and let me click on the uh, source tab over here and you'll see that in fact the way uh, the way the the document is actually serialized out is as a JavaScript object and in fact we could have come in here and entered the document in this fashion as long as we were careful to put um, unique IDs in for ID and revision um, speaking of revision, if we go back over here, and in fact, I didn't even have to do that, but imagine I, I looked this up again and discovered it's not 119 minutes, but it's 120. Now, notice that the revision number ends in CDE76. When I save the document, though, watch what happens. The revision number changed. And this link lit up. Now we have the ability to go and look at both versions. So if I click previous version, we see CDE76 and 119. And if I uh, click next version, we see the 120 minutes and, and 213A. So that's a nice demo for something we've built from scratch. I had already built another document, another, another database, pardon me, um, and it also has just two content documents in it, but, but it has a little more richness. I've actually created a couple of uh, documents here that represent data from the um, 
Pluralsight catalog. So I've created a document for Matt Milner's Developing OData Clients uh, course. Um, I created a keywords field and I've actually set this up as an array. So notice the square brackets open and close. Uh, basically this is a string array. And I've also created a field called metadata that is itself an object. So, um, and this is data uh, pasted straight from the site. So we have the duration, the level, and the release date in the metadata field. If we go to source, notice this really is one op JavaScript object, but it, within it, right, it has an array down here for keywords. And um, it's also got the metadata, which is itself an object. So all of that works very nicely, very fluidly, uh, and very easily. If we um, go back to the uh, home page for the database and click um, this document, you'll notice also I've added an attachment. I did that by clicking Upload Attachment. And what this attachment is, is, a, is actually a listing of all the modules and the clips for Keith's course uh, from the website printed out to a PDF. So now the notion of calling these things document databases really makes sense. And you can imagine that if um, something about this course and its metadata or otherwise were, were updated, um, I'd have the ability to go in there and fix it up. So that's good. Now there's one more document in here. And um, this one's interesting because if you look at its ID, right? It's, um, it's got a very kind of specific format to it. It starts with the word underscore design, and then it, it has a slash on the word example. If I click on that, you'll see there's some interesting stuff going on here. There's ID and revision, just like there was before, but there's a field called shows that has its own kind of subfield, and then there's another field called views. And if I take you over to the source, you'll see what's really going on here which is that um, we've got a bunch of JavaScript in here. And the JavaScript is stored as a value of a key called map, which belongs to an object called all, which is itself a key inside of the views object. So lots of nesting, and we're storing code as data. Now notice what this map function does. And by the way, the reason it's called map is because even in CouchDB, you can do map and reduce. Reduce is optional though. So this map step, this is really easy, right? What this is doing is it's saying, given the document, I'll output its ID and its course. So if you call this, we're going to get the ID and the course for everything in the database. This guy does something a little bit differently, although in our case, it will yield the same result. It'll output the ID and the course if if the string dot net is contained within the keywords array property of the document so we use the javascript index of function and as long as it's greater than zero we can go ahead and see that document and then i did exactly the same thing but in this case instead of for dot all dot net courses it's just for those with the keyword data access so if we ran this thing, we should see just the OData um, course. And if, uh, if we run .NET, we should be able to see both. We also have a show function. We talked about those. This one's called summary. And notice it actually intersperses HTML with data. So we're going to get back the course, the instructor, and the keywords. And we've got labels for each. And course, uh, the course title and the instructor will be inside of H1 tags, so they'll be in larger text. So that's pretty neat now that we have this in here. That's lovely. The question is, how do we run it? And this is uh, where I get to show you this notion of being able to navigate to things directly. I didn't show it to you for documents, but I'm going to show it to you now for views and, and for show functions. Let's flip over to Notepad here. And what you'll see is that we have a bunch of links. Now they all start with the same root, which is simply the local host IP address and um, the default port for uh, CouchDB, which is 5984. Then the name of the database, verbatim, then underscore design to get to a design document, the name of the design document, 
Then within that design document, we want to get to a view, and specifically, we want to get to the view called .NET. This one, as a reminder, should give us both courses. And we'll hit it, and that's exactly what happened. We got developing OData clients, and we got introduction to C Sharp and .NET. Now, this is JavaScript you know, output. Um, ordinarily, this is something we'd request programmatically and process programmatically. But because uh, CouchDB is so uh, HTTP and web-based, we can just you know do this through URLs in the browser. It's no problem. Um, let's go back here and look at the data access one instead. And in this case, we should just see the OData course. And that's exactly what we've got. And then finally, let's look at how we get to the show function. This part's the same as the other two. But because it's a show function, we use underscore show instead of underscore view. Then the name of the show function, and because show functions um, typically will operate on a single document, we have to give it the ID of the document. And this is, I believe, uh, the OData course's ID. I can double check that for you. Let's go back over here. Let's go to Plural Site, And C5C is the OData client's course. So we'll come over here and we'll copy this last link. This is the last part of our demo into the address bar. We'll hit enter and boom, there it is. We have the title uh, and the instructor data in uh, within the H1 tags. And we've got our keywords uh, in regular text. We can view the source and notice we got exactly what we asked for. So pretty neat stuff. Um, Again, very document oriented, very web oriented, and that's why these uh, databases are so popular with developers.